my name is BlueCloud525 and welcome to another Zelda related video. In this video I will be talking about not the connections between Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild, but the connections between the Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild, of which there are less, but still they're pretty cool. So I'm going to start off with what I think is the most obvious one, and the one you've probably seen everywhere else, which is the Koroks. Now, the Koroks are a race of little plant things that evolved from the Kokiri in Ocarina of Time. And the only appearance they ever made in a Zelda game was, of course, the Wind Waker. And in that game, they were planning to drain the ocean and get rid of all the water and save Hyrule again. Which, judging by what we've seen in Breath of the Wild, may have successfully pulled off. Uh, of course, the problem with this is that the Koroks... Can, or the Kokiri can evolve anyway into the Koroks and there's no need for them to be exclusive to the Wind Waker timeline which means if this uh, Breath of the Wild was in any other timeline it would be pretty much okay that the Koroks were there. Second of all is in the Breath of the Wild E3 demo people found this salt on rock faces that uh, had a description that it was from the quote Great Sea of the Past. Now I don't know of any other great seas other than the one in the Wind Waker, which means that it's highly possible that this land was completely covered by a great ocean and then there's a salt left over and obviously Wind Waker. Third of all is destroyed Hyrule. Now, if a, a kingdom was underwater for about 300 years or so, I'd expect it to be in pretty bad shape, which obviously as seen in Breath of the Wild, it is. So that's another reason. Uh, fourth of all is the mountains. Now, Breath of the Wild is one of the most mountain... Well, no, it is the most mountainous Zelda game I've ever seen. Which would obviously be perfect for having islands at the top of these mountains, as in the islands in Breath of the Wild. Or the Wind Waker, excuse me. Uh, another one is the amount of puddles and lakes and rivers in Breath of the Wild is unbelievable. Everywhere you go there's water, which would obviously once again reference a great body of water in the past. The next one is the Master Sword. Now I know the Master Sword was stabbed into Ganon's head at the end of Breath of the Wild, and I'm pretty sure he's dead. Why do I keep saying Breath of the Wild? At the end of the Wind Waker, and I'm pretty sure he's dead. However, as you can see, he has in fact returned in Breath of the Wild, so, you know, maybe something happened with the Master Sword. Which would lead to Ganondorf being freed, as you can see in Breath of the Wild, and Master Sword being put away and left to rot, as you can see in the Breath of the Wild trailer. The next one is the old man who greets you at the beginning of the Breath of the Wild demo, or more than likely the beginning of Breath of the Wild itself, has an incredible resemblance to the King of Hyrule from The Wind Waker. Now... You'll say, ah, oh, but he died at the end of the Wind Waker. We don't know that. We just saw him get buried under 2,000 trillion pounds of water. Pa pounds? <gasps> anyway, we saw him get buried under pounds of water. Oh, great English, Aaron. And, um, well, basically, he died. But we didn't actually get to see that and with the amount of strange things that happen in Zelda games. Maybe he survived. The next one is the shrines in Breath of the Wild have bright blue markings all over the walls, as do the guardians, and a strange text in some ancient Hylian language or something like that. However, we have seen all of this before in the Tower of the Gods in The Wind Waker, which was set down as a challenge to the hero of Hyrule. And as you know, shrines are obviously challenges. Um, that is just a huge connection right there. The next one is, let's assume, first of all, that the person talking to Link at the beginning of Breath of the Wild through the Sheikah Slate is Zelda, okay? That would be Zelda at the beginning of a Zelda game, talking to Link through an inanimate object. We have not, we already have seen this before in a Zelda game, which was the Wind Waker, obviously. And, well, yeah, Zelda was talking to Link in the Wind Waker through some little pendant thing and now she's probably doing it again in Breath of the Wild which would be an obvious reference. The next one, a slightly um, less important one, is that the blue clothes uh, Link wears in Breath of the Wild at the beginning 
are very similar to the blue clothes that you can wear at the beginning of the game in the Wind Waker. And the last one is that the Bokoblins in the Wind Waker and the Bokoblins in Breath of the Wild were very similar. And I know that the Bokoblins were in uh, Twilight Princess, but the similarities between the Wind Waker ones and Breath of the Wild were very obvious. And last of all is, in my opinion, the art styles are fairly similar. So, yeah, that's the connections between the two games. Not as many obvious ones and not as many important ones as the connections between Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild, as you can see in my last video. Go and watch that if you haven't seen it. But, yeah, that's it. And hopefully, if this video gets enough support, and by support, I mean you watching this, that's support for me, <laughs> I will make one with the connections to the final timeline, which is the Downfall timeline, with the Link to the Past, Link Between Worlds, the Oracle games, and the original Zelda games. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this little pile of absolute crap. You just wasted six minutes of your life. I'll see you again wasting more minutes of your life in my next video.